ordained in about six months, and we're so excited to have her the first talk as a minister. And um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna vacate the podium so you can come up here and lean on it. It really helps. And uh, <laughs> I have no idea what she's gonna be talking about other than climate. And as you know, it's variable around here these days. Yes, it is. We have the door open. If it's too cool, move a little bit forward. If you're too hot, move back. Yeah. Back in time. <laughs> See, I'm getting good at this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to talk about Annie, our choir director here. You know, part of the talent of a choir director is choosing songs. And it is so wonderful to have this wide range of uh, songs that she chooses. So let's give her a round of applause. Yay! Just for choosing songs, let alone selling the, these obstinate people and performing them. <laughs> Obstinate, non-talented, half-talented. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Amazing people that rise to the occasion week after week. I came in my work clothes today. I did this on purpose because I'm going to ask you to work. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. So, you know, in spiritual work, there's a, a time for reading, there's a time for study, there's a time for going to classes, there's a time for meditation, there's a time for conversations, and then there's a time of work. Okay, what is the work? The work for me is making a decision, outlining the end result, sticking with it, and then making it happen. In other words, proving that these theories work. You know, it's one thing to believe that all things are possible, and it's another thing to know that my individual life can change because of these principles. So let's talk, I'm going to talk about two things today and ask you if you wish to participate in two projects with me. One is climate change, big climate change, big climate change, California, the world, uh, the United States, the almond growers, big climate change. And then I'm going to talk about <clears throat> personal climate change. What climate are you, are you living in? What, what climate do you believe in? And do you want to change it? Let me begin by telling you that our days are longer, about 45 minutes longer, from January 1st to today. They don't even change one, one hour a, a month. And yet the sun wiggles around through its orbit and gets back to a new position, just a little different than it was in this January 1st. It gradually wiggles around, slowly. And that's how many of our changes happen, wiggling around slowly. And Sometimes our philosophy sounds magical. I can tell you that I decided to get married, and I went out one night, and I danced with six guys, and I married one of them. <coughs> Doesn't that sound magical? Okay, from the point I made the decision to the day I got married was 28 months. Okay, yes, it was magical because it happened, and it hadn't happened for 18 years previously. Yeah, so it was magical, but it was not instantaneous. 
Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I thought, Smitty. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, climate of California. Our snowpack, when I decided to choose this topic, our snowpack was very minimal. However, we've had some storms, and I'm happy to report that the snowpack is normal. Now, why is that important? A lot of our water comes from the Sierra snowpack. And the drought happens not only when it doesn't rain here, but when it doesn't uh, snow up in the mountains and it doesn't flood down. Uh, I looked at the rain today. We're still an inch and a half below normal for San Jose for this time of year. Now, I don't know how that's possible after this latest storm, but that's what the paper reported, so I'll believe it today. Can we personally change those weather patterns and create rain and snow? How many of you have had an experience of creating weather? A couple of you, some of you, yeah. So I'm going to tell you a kind of unintentional, overpraying weather change, okay? Uh, when my kids were little and I got a divorce, my mother and I decided to go visit some friends in Canyonlands. And for three months, we worried about how hot it was going to be. How would we manage? I tried to borrow a car with air conditioning. No, that didn't work. So we were in a car with no con air conditioning going across the desert. And it was going to be really, really, really hot. And for three months, we talked about how we would deal with this heat. So we pulled into Canyonlands, and my mom said, oh, I don't like the looks of those clouds. Oh, mom, it's a desert, it's summer, it's hot. Well, that night it started misting, and at 4 o'clock in the morning, it was raining very hard. We had an inch of water flooding through our tent, and it was dripping down in my, the tent I found out was not weatherproof. And I heard my mom wrestling around. I said, are you okay? And she said, well, I'm all wet. I said, well, yeah, okay. And we laid there for a minute, and I said, well, it's not hot. <laughs> <laughs> it rained. It th we had thunderstorms. In the mountains, there was a blizzard, unseasonal blizzard. So do you think I believe in weather change? Yeah, 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 big time. One time I created what I called a rain team, and I got a bunch of people to help me pray for rain, and we prayed for rain. So a couple of years later, I was in the Caribbean on a, one of my sailing vacations, and when I got home, I found out there had been a huge rainstorm with flooding, like over like what you had last year. I had 20 messages. Joan, stop the rain. <laughs> Come home and stop the rain. And by the time I got home, it had stopped. Okay, how do you visualize rain? How do you change rain? How do you create rain? Before, you know, the 15 minutes before you go to sleep at night is the most powerful time of the day for creation. Did y'all know that? Yeah, okay, well. Okay, if you, if you don't know that, just trust me, a lot of people talk about that. And I've tried it, and it works for me, so I'm sharing it with you. It's part of my work. So, you visualize rain, soft, gentle rain soaking into the ground, benefiting everybody. Now the almond, I don't know if you know this, but apparently California produces the majority of almonds in the world. Like a million, almost a million tons last year. Isn't that amazing? In the past, almond trees were watered by flooding, flooding. Then the drought came, 
And then the growers said, well, we can't flood. There's not enough water to flood. So they have drip watering for each tree. And when the tree gets thirsty, it signals, and they turn on the water for that tree. And they've reduced the un amount of water needed for each tree for the growth for the growth of almonds. You see, they changed. Did it happen all at once? No. No. <laughs> they decided they wanted to stay in the almond business, and so they devised a new technology, a new system, and made the change happen. All right. So that's what we also can do is devise new ways of thinking. Now, how many of you listen to the news and hear about climate change, the planet? We're not even going to be able to live on the planet. Yeah, it's a disaster. All right, so I am old enough to tell you that when I was a little kid, the headlines on the newspaper in Southern California were about massive snowstorms in the Midwest. Many of you won't remember that, but they had a picture of the orange groves with oranges, bright shiny oranges, big snow-capped mountains, bright blue sky and clouds. And next to that, they had cattle up to their bellies in snow, dying because they couldn't get to their feed trust. And I lived through that. Yeah, okay. Yep. See, we know. Probably Dottie remembers that, too. No, I just remember the shiny oranges. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what changed? Okay, we went through a change. Then we, that, you know, they haven't had a lot of uh, snow at times, and now they've had this terrible snow and polar vortex thing. So it seems to be returning to what I remember. Doesn't seem to me to be a new phenomenon. It seems like it's, it, there's a cycle of change. Yeah. So what? What do we do when we listen to these news reports? Ah, uh, yeah, you can turn off the news or you can say, you know, that's their opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't right. agree with that. Right. Right. But move away from the fear. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes I get to the point where oh, I'm scared. What, what if? Do I have to move? Uh, do I have to get away from California? California is going to fall in the ocean. Do you remember that, Dottie? Mm -hmm. yes. Well, you know, parts of, parts of Pacifica did fall in the ocean. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there are, you know, the coastline does naturally fall into the ocean, but California as a whole has not fallen into the ocean yet, right? The exception with Pacifica, they have sand dune cliffs. Yeah, There's Pacific, sand dunes, yeah. It's just going to wash away. Yeah. So, uh, I don't I, I don't recommend in Pacific uh, Ocean front property. <laughs> 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 uh, I live in the far San Francisco, it's close to Pacifica. I have friends that live in Pacifica, and their house washed away. Yeah. And uh, wow, some it's called Avalon Drive. So yeah. when you when you hear about California is going to fall into the ocean. It doesn't mean that on the state line, <laughs> it's going to follow the state line and collapse into the Pacific Ocean, does no, it? No. No. It, no. It, it means that in Pacifica, where they have sand and cliffs, some of it's going to fall some into Some of Malibu, the ocean. a little bit of. Yeah, yeah Malibu and some other places. But the, the key is don't let fear get into you. Move forward knowing that Earth is intelligent. Mother Earth has a mind of its own. It is intelligent. Uh, when I was, before I created the RAIN team, <laughs> I created a team to see um, Lake Observatory. Now in the old days we had so much smog in this area 
many days we you couldn't see Lick Observatory. So we meditated on Monday night, 10 o'clock, and cleared the air. And Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we could see Lick Observatory. Then it started clouding up again. I, we can see it every day now. You know, if, if, if there's no clouds uh, hiding it, we can see it every day. What happened? They cleaned the air up. The set technology happened. So, it, what I'm trying to tell you is that change happens mm -hmm. and embrace it. Mm -hmm. Move forward. Fearlessly. Fearlessly. <coughs> okay. In the faith that I was brought up in Buddhism, it's about change. It's, life is just a series of changes go from birth to death. Life is a series of changes from birth to death. Everything in between is your life. And it's one change after another. How many agree with that? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw a great saying the other day. I saw this great saying that said, let go of what was, accept what is, and have faith in what will be. See, that's the work. You know, that's the work. Okay, how many of you know who Tony Roma is? Ah, someone love his prayers. Love him. Okay. Tony Roma was for those of you that don't know, for those of you that don't know, was a quarterback, an outstanding quarterback yes. for the Dallas Cowboys for many years. He has now retired and has become an announcer for uh, football. He's the announcer for the game today, and, and I may watch it just to hear him, because what he does is predicts. Apparently, he doesn't just call the plays. He predicts. He says, okay, this time he's going to pass to the to the right end, and whatever. Um, and they found out that his predictions are 68% correct. Wow. Yeah. Pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, so I'll be interested in hearing it. But when he retired, he gave a little talk and he said, um, each of us have two battles. One is with the, out, the person sitting across from you, and the other is the person within you. If you win the battle with the person within you, it doesn't matter who sits across from you. Yay, Tony! Yay, Tony! You know, we used to be huge football fans, but with all the incidents of um, brain damage and everything, we sort of quit. But I may watch today just to hear what he has to say. All right, so I need to quickly ask you and remind you that your own personal life can change also the same way. Making a decision, sticking with it, and picking the end result, and maintaining the picture. So if we're going to imagine rain, soft, gentle rain that soaks into the ground, not torrents of rain that cause floods, soft, gentle rain, so if we're going to imagine that, then your next exercise is to imagine the life you want. What climate are you living in? Are you living in a climate of, I don't have enough money. I'm single, I don't want to be. I'm married and I don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, there's both sides of that question. Um, my health isn't good. I don't know how to fix it. You know, there's probably a dozen common uh, goals or uh, challenges that I could talk about. But I'm going to talk about one. I'm just going to talk about money. Is that okay? Sure. Oh, okay, good. 
So I made up a prayer for money so that we could have a, a season of celebrating financial prosperity. And the way I'd like to close is to talk just a little bit about that for a minute, and then we're gonna, I'm going to share the prayer with you. Money comes to us in many ways. My mom and dad went, decided to go on a trip to the desert. They didn't really have enough money, but they were going to decide to go anywhere, anyway. And they were standing on the bank of the Colorado River near Needles, looking at the boats. And it was one of those quiet moments. And my mom heard some kind of paper down by her foot. And she looked at it, she said, what is that? It was a hundred dollar bill. Whoa. Money That's time. manifesting. Whoop! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. It does grow on trees. <laughs> Money comes in many ways. One time my house was going to, when I was first single and didn't ever reconcile my bank, my house was going to get foreclosed on. And I don't know, the money got in the bank and my house didn't get foreclosed on. Yay! Yeah. Who, who else has had made money miracles? <clears throat> one money miracle. Okay, one money miracle. Um, I had paid a down payment to go on a trip, and <clears throat> my car broke down, and I couldn't pay the rest of it. And I called Corky and Dottie, said I'm not going to make it to the trip. And a couple of weeks later, I got a phone call from Corky that said, you're going to England with us <clears throat> because I paid for it. And then when she needed me to pay her back, the money was there when I needed it. Uh -huh. Yay! Yay! Wow. Money miracle. Well, after my husband died, um, I wanted to go on this trip, and then I thought, no, I won't go because it's too expensive. And I kept saying that it's just too expensive, it's too expensive. And he started talking to me, and he said, it's okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll send you the money. And two days later, I got this giant check in the mail. Uh, wow. From the insurance? Um, no, it came from a car sale. <laughs> Is that something else? Yeah. I have an interesting story. I put into the universe that I, I do need money, and I'm hoping the universe will manifest some money. And I got out of my car, and there was a quarter on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I realized I didn't specify how much. <laughs> <laughs> When I was stationed in France, a friend of mine needed some money to get back to the States because his mother was dying. I was a little short of funds, but I loaned him, I gave him $50. I knew I'd never see it back. Several years later, I'm assigned to Keesler Air Force Base, Biloxi, Mississippi, and my car is going to be repossessed because I simply can't make the payments. The night before they're going to repossess it, there's a knock on the door. This kid showed up and handed me $300. Whoa. He said, that's interest. Oh he tracked me down from across the world wow. to pay me back. Wow. wow. Okay, money wow. comes in many ways, many places, and in many amounts. So, <clears throat> I'm going to share this prayer with you, and then that will be the end. But you have to say amen every so often. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read something, and I'm going to go like this. You're going to say amen, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Choreographed. <laughs> God is good. Amen. Amen. We have been given a promise that all who ask receive. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. We give thanks that our prayers are heard. Amen. Amen. We have been instructed that when two or more agree and gather, their prayers will be heard. Amen. Amen. We are gathered here, and we choose to begin celebrating a season of financial prosperity. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> financial prosperity for me personally. Amen. Me personally. Amen. 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 For the Center for Creative Living. Amen. Amen. And for our parent organization, Universal Church of the Mass. Amen. Amen. 
everyone prospers financially during this season of financial prosperity. Amen. Amen. We receive money in regular ways, in surprising ways, in big amounts, in little amounts, extra amounts, normal amounts, mysterious amounts, expected amounts. It's all good. Thank you, God. Amen. We give thanks for each coin. <laughs> 25 cents. <laughs> each dollar and each deposit. Amen. 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 Jesus taught us to give thanks, knowing that our prayers are answered. So we give thanks for our financial abundance right now. Amen. Amen. Yay, thank you. Thank you.